Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever in the world you might be watching. Many employment agencies and employers today have moved to the later version of Microsoft Excel. It is now version 16, as opposed to the previous upload, which was for Excel 2007, 2010 and 2013. A link to that previous upload is available to you in the description below this particular uh, video. What we'll do, we'll use the same procedure. We will tick off each of the tasks as we perform them so that we know exactly where we are for our learning. So the first thing we're going to do is to place a border around the cells E7 to G12. And to do that, I simply invoke the golden rule of all computing, select then do. So I've selected the cells and here in the home tab I see the in the font group I see the border command if I click on the drop arrow I can choose various borders. I'll choose outside border and when I click away I see that it has placed that border around those cells so we can tick that one as being completed. The next task is to format the data as currency. So again, select then do, because when I select I can now go to the number group in the home tab and click the drop arrow next to the little coins there and we'll choose English United States. And what that does, that gives me a dollar sign to the far left of the cells and two decimal points. If you don't want the two decimal points in the number group, there is a button. When I hover over it, it says says decrease decimal. So every time I click once on it, it decreases the decimal. So two clicks gets rid of the two decimals. So there we go, we can click that one. Now our next task is to wrap the text in D14 and H6 because I see here that in D14 and H6 the text has moved across into the next cell or has been truncated in the case of H6. So I'm going to click in D14. I'll hold down my command key in an Apple or the control key in Windows and click on H6. And then in the alignment group in the home tab, I'll click wrap text and that is exactly what it does. So I was able to do that uh, to both cells at the one time by using the control or command key. So we'll put a tick in there as having been completed. Use a formula to calculate the total costs. I want the total costs in these cells here. There are a couple of ways to do it. I'll show you the, the normal way that people use, and that is to click in the first cell, and then here in the editing group in the home tab, I see the auto sum button. And the way Excel works is this. When I click auto sum, it looks to the left because there were no numbers above or below that it could add. So it's guessed correctly. They're the numbers I want to add. So I'll press the enter key. And there are the total costs for the apples. But I want them for all of the fruits. So I'll click back onto that cell. And here in the bottom right hand corner of the cell, I see the autofill button. When I hover over it with my mouse, my mouse changes to a, a cross here and I will drag down and copy those formulas down. So that's nice and easy. It's a commonly used formula, the auto sum. So we'll tick that. The next is to use a formula to calculate average costs. Now you'll need to watch carefully here because Excel actually makes a mistake in its guessing. I'm going to click in average costs and I want the average cost of the uh, fruits here. Uh, for January, February and March and to do that in the editing group I'll click the drop arrow next to auto sum and choose average. What it's done, it's included the total cost by fruit in the averages. We don't particularly want that so I have to override Excel's incorrect guess and I do that by simply dragging through the cells that I want to find the average of. Once I've done that, I press the Enter key, and there are now my correct average costs. 
I'll click on that button and again I will simply drag down with the autofill button and there are my average costs. So remember, sometimes Excel guesses incorrectly. You have to look at its guess and if needs be, override its guess by dragging through the cells that you want the formula performed in. So we'll put a tick in that one. Now it says change the alignment in column D to right. At the moment everything is aligned by default to the left. To select a column, I click on the column heading. And that selects all the data all the way down to over a million rows. Uh, but it will only perform the action, of course, in the viewable area to what I see. So what we're going to do here in the alignment group, I'll click the right align button, this one here, align right, and it has aligned everything to the right. Nice and easy. The next task is to save the file to the Windows desktop. To do that, I click File, Save As, and I'll have to give the file a name and then tell it where I want the particular uh, file saved to. Now you need to be guided here by your employer or the employment agency as to where the file should be saved to. But that's the procedure to actually save the file and give it a name. So we'll cancel that one and we'll put a tick there. Insert a row below row 6. Now when I want to insert a row below, I need to right click on the row below the row that I want to insert the row. So I right click and choose insert and Excel inserts a blank row below the row uh, as I mentioned. We'll click away and now we'll put a tick next to that and our next task is to insert a column before column H. To do that I right click on the column H and I choose insert and that inserts a blank column to the left of the of the um, chosen the selected column and all the columns are renamed you don't have to worry about changing any formulas or the like so we'll put a tick in there we'll click away and we're going along nicely here change the orientation to landscape by default a spreadsheet sheet for printing purposes is produced in portrait but if you don't want it in portrait you can change the orientation to landscape for printing purposes so what we'll do here we'll simply click in the page layout tab and then orientation click the drop arrow and click landscape you won't see any change here in the uh, worksheet but the uh, spreadsheet when printed would now print in landscape. We'll see that when we get to the printing. Centre the worksheet horizontally and vertically. Now this is a very handy command and if I click on the drop arrow for the margins tab and go down to custom margins I can see at the bottom left hand corner here centre on page horizontally and vertically. There are ticks in there. By default you may see that there are no ticks it may look like that and you'll notice that the the guide to how it prints will look thus but as soon as I put ticks in there it will print exactly in the middle of the page with equal margins top left right and bottom so now we'll click OK check the spelling a couple of ways to do this if you're using Windows press F7 if you're in a Mac, you can click Review, and over on the far left in the Proofing group, check Spelling. So we'll click that, and it says, Oh, I found a word, fruiters. Did you really mean fritterers? Well, the answer is no, so I'm going to ignore that one time. Now, when I click Close, there are no more spelling errors. It would have pointed out the spelling errors had there been. So... We'll put a tick, check the spelling. Rename the sheet as sheet one as first quarter. Down here, to rename a sheet, I right click on it and rename, and I'll call it first quarter. Nice and easy. Press enter to accept your change. Tick, 
done, insert a new worksheet. Very, very easy. Click the plus sign and that gives you a new worksheet. That's now become sheet one because we renamed the original sheet one to first quarter. Back to first quarter, insert a new worksheet. Create a column chart to show the produce, the months and the data. The produce, the months and the data. Here we invoke again the golden rule of all computing by selecting and then clicking the insert command and over here I see a group called charts. I'll click on recommended charts and I'll choose the one at the top here, uh, the standard uh, cluster column. And when I do that, there is my chart. I can move the chart around if I wish. I can resize it by pointing at the corner handles and there is my chart. I'll move it over here. If I want to change the chart title, I simply click on chart title and type the name uh, that I want for that particular chart. We'll leave it chart title at this stage. That's a tick. Change the width of column D so the contents fit within. In column D I see that the XYZ fruiterers are not all in column D. A little bit of it of it is in column C. So what I'm going to do here is to point at the divider line between column D and column E and I see my mouse changes to a double headed arrow I'm going to double click and what that does that gives me best fit. I could have dragged but I chose best fit. So now the uh, width of column D has been changed so everything fits nicely with it. Even the even that cell that we uh, wrap the text in. Bold all the headings and change the font to 12 points. We can do all this at the one time. Holding down the control key in Windows or the command key in uh, an Apple Mac. So I'm going to first of all click on that heading and hold down my control or command key. Drag through other headings as I need to. And there we go. Now it says bold all those headings. See, I can do them all at the one time. I save time by, by multi-selecting. Bold, there they are, all bolded. We'll change the font size to 12, make them a little bit bigger. There we go. And now we can tick that one as having been done. And next, I'll click away here. I see that the heading for this spreadsheet is over here. Many people, for presentation's sake, like to merge and centre their headings across the data. So all I need to do is to drag across the cells across which I want the heading to be centred, and then in the alignment group, I click Merge and Centre. And that merges and centre that particular heading. It looks much more professional. Center the labels in E6 to I6. E6, control key down, and center the headings. We click the alignment group, center text. And there I see that it has centered that text. It's chopped off, however, the A for average. So what I need to do is to double click to get, whoops, uh, let's click away. I need to double click there to get best fit for the average cost. Change the active cell to G2. Well, this is quite simple. I purely put this one in to show that an active cell becomes the cell that you click on thus. We don't need to worry too much about that one. Copy the contents of D9 and paste them in D18. In D9, I have the word oranges. I'm going to right click and copy and then go down to D18. I might need to move my chart a little bit here. D18, right click. And what I'll do here, I will uh, uh, issue the uh, paste command, control V on a Mac, or uh, paste uh, control V also in, in Windows. Then it says, delete the contents of D18. 
With D18 selected, I can only delete from a selected cell, I press the delete key. Now I'll drag my chart back, just to keep it looking nice and even. Now we're getting, getting to the stage where we can look at print preview. First of all, we're going to select all of the data by dragging through it. And then we will hold down the control key or command key in Apple Mac and press the letter P. And what that does, it brings up the print uh, window. And you'll see that, notice how the uh, all the data is nicely uh, placed on the sheet. The reason being that we said center the data horizontally and vertically. So there's your print preview. And now all you need to do is issue the print command by clicking the print button. I won't click the print button here because uh, I don't particularly want to print to my printer, but that would print uh, to a uh, printer at the uh, employment agency or the employer. You might just need to check uh, what printer you need to choose up here in the printer uh, drop down list. So I'm going to cancel that and we can tick those last three. And ladies and gentlemen, that completes this presentation. Again, I wish you every success with your job test. You'll find that in the basic Excel uh, all versions test that you'll come across that everything is covered here for you. Don't forget to subscribe and we love, of course, likes and comments. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.